Monday, everybody. Monday, Monday. You can trust that day. And uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, at least here where I live anyway. Um, it's about 22 degrees. Let's go to the weather, shall we? Uh, we'll just uh, – who do you like better, Siri or Alexa? Siri or Alexa. Alexa, what's the weather? Right now in Sarnia, it's 18 degrees Celsius with mostly sunny skies. Today's forecast has lots of clouds with a high of 21 degrees and a low of 15 yeah. degrees. High 21. Clouds I can handle. Rain I'm not into. Thanks. Alexa, volume five. Now let's try this out. I've always wanted to do this. Let's do that again so we can hear her. Alexa, what's the current weather? In Sarnia, it's 18 degrees Celsius with mostly sunny skies. Today, you can look for lots of clouds with a high of 21 degrees and a low of 15 degrees. Hey Siri, what's the current weather? It's currently clear and 21 degrees. Expect rain starting tonight. Temperatures are heading up from 21 degrees to 27 degrees this afternoon. They say two different things. Who do you believe? <laughs> I don't know. Whichever one works better for my motorcycle. Corinders out there. He says, hey, David, are you doing challenge of StreamYard? I no idea what you're referring to. If there was something announced, I haven't uh, watched the StreamYard town hall in a while. I'm doing it. Good. I don't know what you're referring to. Sorry. Is everything okay? Yes. Everything's okay with me? Everything's okay with you? <laughs> um. <clears throat> Yeah, I like the one that suits better for my motorcycle. I was listening to Cool 106.3 FM uh, this morning. but I, I do most mornings. I enjoy listening to Max Major. And um, he was he put out a dad joke challenge. And I didn't have my, my 365 dad joke calendar available and handy. But they were giving away tickets for something. And it was if you could tell um, <clears throat> a dad joke that made him moan. Arr, then that was that was a good thing. I have 365 here on my calendar. And I haven't done the dad joke thing in a while. My friend Danny Cochimilio hasn't shown up in a while. He always likes the the dad jokes. Um let's pick one. Uh let's uh, what goes <laughs> What goes ha ha thump? Someone laughing their head off. All right, I can handle that. Is that is that good? Is that bad? Boo hiss. All right. How about uh, relationships are a lot like algebra. Have you ever looked at your ex and wondered why? <laughs> All right, that's it for the dad jokes today. Uh, whether you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, great, nice to have you here. Uh, Put your dad jokes in the comments. I'd love to hear your dad jokes. Keep them clean, of course. <laughs> but uh, uh, dad jokes can be fun. And again, I got 365 of them. So uh, one for me to, to, to share every day, right? So, But I won't bore you with the, the, the dad jokes. But they can be uh, pretty groaning. Groaning bad dad jokes. Bad dad jokes or just dad jokes? Or, or dad jokes just bad, period. I don't know. Hey, we want to take a moment to say uh, thanks to our sponsors. Of course, always like to recognize my sponsors. Thanks to Hughes Intelligence Security Services for joining uh, the the support around the support joining what joining the support group. Why can't I talk? Uh, really appreciate their support. Uh, Joe's Discount Tire also thanks to them for their ongoing support here in Signs SWO and of course Tourism Sarnia Lampton. And uh, we had Mark Perrin here from. Uh, Tourism Serenity Lampton here last week. That's their website, Ontario's Blue Coast. You can find out so many great things that are happening by going to ontbluecoast.com. That's their uh, website. There's lots listed there. And another great website is to go to the City of Sarnia website, calendar.sarnia.ca. And there is all kinds of upcoming events that the City of Sarnia puts on. And did I fold that up and throw it? No, that's the wrong one. I don't have it. Where did I do with that? I had a list. Um, but there's all kinds of things going on in Lambton County. You got to get off your couch, get out the door. It's been some, you know, up and down weather. But at the end of the day, it's it's just good to get outside and enjoy 
some things that are happening here uh, in the area. And uh, what else was I going to ask you? I'll show you the, uh, where is that? Yeah, I lost myself. I need to hire a producer. Who can I get to be a producer? I don't know. The pay is not very good at all. But I can tell you that it would be an experience for you. <laughs> um, I do want to go out and uh, bring up the Ride of Respect, of course, is coming up uh, this Saturday, June the 18th. And uh, I'm really proud to be, uh, you know, I started this three years ago now. This will be the third annual Ride of Respect. And, of course, the Ride of Respect began during the pandemic. And the idea was to ride through the city to give respect to frontline workers. Now, there, you know, some people were, that was Sarnia Fire Police, et cetera. But it was really like people at the grocery stores, uh, dental field, et cetera. And really, at the end of the day, everyone in the community had to do something to you know, get through the pandemic or give their support. We all dealt with it in a different sort of way. As we progressed into the second year last year, of course, the tragedy of the Indigenous children and their families, we added a ride past the Amgenong Memorial here. And now into our third year, we're going to be doing it again. And this year, we will start the ride from Preferred Towing, who uh, brought forth, uh, Tammy and her husband Gary brought forth the Ohana Landing Youth Transitional Housing Facility, formerly the ABC Daycare uh, Center here. And they brought that to life, supporting youth in our community. And we've collected money at every ride to support them. And that's what we'll be doing again this year. But we'll be starting the ride at Preferred Towing. So you'll be able to come down there, see a whole bunch of motorcycles. You don't have to have a motorcycle um, if you just want to come down and walk around and check out the motorcycles and Preferred Towing will likely have some big tow trucks and rotators, you know, Stars of Heavy Rescue 401. So come on down and see them. They'll have some of their, uh, you know, T-shirts and hoodies, et cetera, that you can purchase if you like. And the proceeds from that also go to support Ohana Landing. And all we ask that when you come down to check things out is just throw into the donation bucket. And, of course, if you're a motorcycle rider, we definitely want you there. Go to riderrespect.ca and you can find out more information about the route and how you can donate and some other fun things that are going to be happening as well. We will be going through the city of Sarnia. And then this year, we're also going to be going out to Bright's Grove for a short stint. And then we'll come back and uh, down Mendamin, the London Line, and we'll end up at London Line Burger. I've got great, great new owners out there of London Line Burger and hardworking staff. And they're just very, very respectful and very friendly and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting out there. So we're going to be showing some support uh, for uh, local business as well. And also thanks to our friends at OPSU. OPSU, I think I say that right. Local 128, especially in particular the Corrections Division, who gave support to Ohana Landing recently, well, in the wintertime months. I actually reached out to President uh, Joel Bissonnette. They sat outside in a tent, raised $5,000 to donate to Ohana Landing. So come on out there to Preferred Towing. Arrival and staging starts at 11.30, and then the kickstands will kick up at 1 o'clock, and the ride will begin. It's also a ride to show that motorcycles, and a reminder that motorcycles are on the road, and everybody just needs to share the road. Motorcycles, cyclists, cars, scooters, the road belongs to everybody. So Again, whether or not you're a part of riding motorcycles, come on out and say hello to us anyway. We'd love to have you out there. All right. Of course, uh, last week as well, we had Mark Perrin, uh, the lead on Blue Water Border Fest. Blue Water Border Fest, tickets going well, but VIP is gone. Uh, there's still some general admission tickets left. Thursday, the Tea Party, Sam Roberts, Sky Wallace, and Born Riot will take the stage. And Friday, wow, this is amazing. Alessia, they're all amazing, but Alessia Cara is going to be there. And that's really top-notch. Um, she's huge right now. And Mariana's Trench, Ryland James, and Kubi also there. And then Saturday, Our Lady Peace, Finger 11, Sloan, and Aces High. I will be there as well once again. I'll be the host um, and the MC for the events. And I, I know our friends from uh, the radio station will be there as well. So um, get your tickets. Go to bluewaterborderfest.com and enjoy the party that's coming up, right? What else we got happening? Anything else? No, I think that's it for now, except my first guest. I'm really excited for this because um, um, 
it's like bowling. Bowling is just wow. You 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 don't even know how big bowling is. And I remember way back in the day, I worked at Marson Bowl and I saw some of the great bowlers that were happening out there. And it's really nice to see that it's continued on. And here comes my first guest, Morgan Pelkey. How are you today, Morgan? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. You heard me kind of talking there. It's nice to see bowling. Like it's it's still a really a big deal, right? Yeah, well, um, it's kind of interesting because down here in like southern Ontario, it's pretty big, but you don't hear about it as much. But yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that it's starting to pick up again now that people are after something to do. Yeah, after being stuck inside for so long. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. It's good to get out. Now, are, are, where are you right now? Are you are you here in home or are you in Oklahoma? I'm actually back here in town. Um, I'm prepping to leave within like the next three days or so. So right. yeah. Right. Well, Morgan, um, you got some family around here. That's pretty proud of you. That's kind of how uh, this uh, all got linked in together. Karen reached out to me, which was uh, fantastic. And uh, she told me a little bit of the story, but can you share with the viewers, like, uh, you know, like you started hanging around the bowling alley uh, around age four and then by age five, you were bowling and it, it just took off from there. Yeah. So my mom actually used to bowl in a league. Uh, so when I, when she first had me, I stayed home maybe like one season with my grandparents and then I'd be at the bowling alley with her almost every night that she was bowling leagues. So I've been around it most of my life. My yeah. other aunt, she also used to bowl as well. Okay. So it's kind of just been in the family for a while. Right. And then I found a real big interest in it the closer I got to looking at school wise and all that. So okay. I put my name out into that um, collegiate pool to see if I could get a scholarship somewhere and I was able to eventually find a school that I really liked. So yeah. Yeah. But you you didn't just apply and you got the scholarship. Come on now, you worked really hard at this bowling and and uh, got really good at it. You were uh, you were mentored and I guess coached by uh, Gil Jean, right? Correct. Yeah, um, he was my coach for I'd say about ten years. Okay. So when I started to first like really get into it is when I first saw Gil as more of a full-time coach than just like a Saturday league coach that right well then Gil Gil has been around a long time I when I worked at Marson Bowl he was there and he had, and that was 30 years ago and uh <laughs> uh and he was there long before that so he's definitely someone to have in your uh in your alley so to speak um and, and what is it about bowling that intrigued you like I mean there's so many sports you know we hear about a lot of the bigger sports why bowling um I think it's just because bowling, you've got so many diverse styles that you could honestly throw it however you want and still be extremely good and mm. make a name for yourself. So I think the diversity in how you play versus like, I don't know, basketball or something like that. With basketball, you pretty well all play the same. You play like right. the same. You've, you're you taught the same skills, whereas in like bowling, you could – you can pick between single-handed right like single-handed right or left or two-handed and then the complexity there's a lot more complexity behind the actual sport than a lot of people think okay so being able to learn that different complexity and being able to apply it to how like i compete i think what made me really interested in it Nice, nice. Yeah, because I've watched. Yeah, I was the guy. I just threw it straight down. Like I threw it straight. I tried to get between the, the, the head arrow and the one to the right or the left. And if I could do mm -hmm. that, I was okay. But then I would see guys. They would just spin them, and they'd come right out to the edge. And then right when they wanted it to, it just came back in and smash. How do you, how do you throw? Um. So I used to throw more along the lines of like straight up the lane. But as I've been in school, I've kind of learned to change my game. So I'm able to throw, I think three different, I'm comfortable in like three areas roughly. So being okay. able to, so being able to like um, play those areas allows me that kind of like freedom when competing in school. Right. Right. And does Gil Jean, uh, does he still uh, uh, text you once in a while? Or I read something where um, he watches the live streams. Yeah, so I'll message him every once in a while, um, but 
a lot of people that have helped me throughout like my life getting to where I am now I communicate a lot more through Facebook just because I don't know what their schedules look like anymore so right yeah. yeah it's nice to have that connection when you're away so you're mm-hmm. you're at Oklahoma City right I uh, I'm in Edmond so it's like Mississauga to Toronto kind of thing right so I'm right. just right outside of Oklahoma City oh okay all right um, I, I, what was that like? Because because you're from Sarnia, right? Originally, correct. Yeah. So going over to the states, did you did you find that different, or was it just uh, just a small adjustment, or was it a big adjustment for you? Um, I'd say like the first being from Sarnia made it a little bit easier, but like I'd say the first month or so was kind of iffy, I guess, just because like right. there was a lot of. It, I feel like it would have been different if I was in a northern state, but being so south. It just, I don't know. It it was interesting, but definitely took some getting used to. But now that I've been there, it's it's almost like a second home. Right, right. And you're you're 21 right now, correct? Correct. So you, now you're you're on uh, Team Canada, and you're headed to Sweden. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that Team Canada for bowling? What level is that, and and what is this in Sweden you're going to? So Team Canada is the absolute highest level you can achieve in um in canada at least so for that you have to do a tryout so every year uh we do team trials so you're competing against a whole bunch of different people and anyone above the age of 18 can compete for the adult team i did make the youth team however so they'll take the top four um females under the or 21 and under right to compete so this is my second time that I'll be competing for the team. I competed back in 2019 and we went to the Dominican Republic right. um, for what's called PabCon. So that's the Pan American Games. Whereas this year we're going to um, Worlds. So we are going and competing against, I think, 66 other countries somewhere wow. in there. Yeah, whereas in like PabCon, we competed against like 12 other countries. So it's yeah. going to be a lot bigger. But is, is, uh, uh, bowling's not an Olympic sport, is it? No, but we've been working at getting bowling to be an Olympic sport. It's in, um, it's a contender for the 2024 Olympics. Nice, nice. So. I, I always wondered, like, why not? Like, <laughs> you know, we're currently, I believe, we're in contention with break dancing. With break so, dancing. Correct. Oh come so, on. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I get break dancing, but uh, I mean, okay, I'm rooting for bowling. That's mm-hmm. that's great. So there's some advocacy there. This has got to be uh, super excited for exciting for you. Um, you know, obviously for the team, but you as an individual, I mean, you're 21 years old, you've been doing this, you've been a Dominican, so you've got some traveling under your belt. Um, you've, so you, you've met some other cultures. Um, you got to feel pretty good about being able to do this. Yeah, I'm extremely excited. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, but that's to be expected. I think they're more of excitement nerves than anything, but, yeah. um, yeah, I'm just excited to be able to represent the country again for my last time as a youth and then hoping to see what happens next year to see if I can represent as an adult too. Right. Right. Now you're uh, I, I, that was my next question. So after this, what's, what's next? Does, does this go pro for you? Is that something that you wanted to do? Um, I'm kind of open to the idea, but I'm also a big got to finish my education first. So yep. Right on. I want to get my master's before I decide if I want to go pro or not. So yep. I might give it a year <clears throat> and try. There is no try. <laughs> Only do. Remember? Isn't exactly. that Yoda, Yoda that said that? <laughs> um, and so you're a political science major at OC, right? Correct. Talk, talk about that and, and how did that become a choice for you? So I eventually... St- I, when I first registered for university, I was a history pre-law with the intention of going to law school. And then as I progressed through my degree, I realized that if I wanted to get into law school, I didn't necessarily need a pre-law aspect. So 
I ended up switching to a more contemporary major okay. that focuses on more like current issues. Right. So being able to look at these current issues is also helping like broaden my aspects for future. Right, right. And where's where's family in all of this? Like are they they've got to be uh, super supportive of what you're doing. Um, my mom is extremely supportive. So is my stepdad. My entire family is actually very supportive. Yeah. Um, but my mom is kind of my rock in the situation. She, she's helping me get through school. She's helping me be able to do what I love at school. And she's the one that's encouraged me throughout my entire bowling career. So, yeah, it's nice to have that to lean on. Oh yeah. And my aunts are super supportive. I absolutely appreciate the support that my aunt gives me as well as my uncle as well too. Right. Right. Which aunt are you talking about? Um, both actually, both are extremely <laughs> supportive, but yeah. my aunt Karen is extremely, extremely supportive and yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, of course, and her boy, Josh, he he's bowling too, and he's done quite well. Uh, yeah. He's maybe uh, following in your footsteps a little bit. He, he might, he's not a hundred percent sure yet, but he's definitely, he said he wants to pick it back up now that bowling alleys are open again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you give him some tips? Do you share tips and, and thoughts on how to do stuff? Yeah, absolutely. If he's got any questions, I'm always open to helping him. Yeah. Do you, do you realize you ever sit back like, okay, I'm 21 years old and I'm, I'm traveling, you know, to another part of the world. Um, do you, are you aware of the impact that you're having on other young ladies or, or just young people in general that are, are younger than you that look up to you? Do you realize you have that? Um, at first I really didn't realize that. And then like, as I kind of got older and matured, I realized that because I was one of like the first few people, I think there was like a handful of people roughly around my age that chose to go away to school. Right. or go and compete at higher levels for athletics. So being able to look back now three years out of high school, almost four, and see that there's like five or six other people from town that were able to go away to school or perform at a higher level, just kind of, it help. it's nice to be part of that push to help these kids realize that like there's more out there than just your typical uh, recreational activity right right good for you and uh of course when you get back um uh, regardless of what happens uh, people will be cheering for you and uh, uh um i'm sure there'll be some celebrations that you're home safe and all that sort of stuff but um what's your what's your what's your biggest takeaway from all this uh, i guess you we can call it a success that you've had with uh with bowling so far um, my biggest takeaway, honestly, is just to be grateful for what you're given, because if I wasn't grateful and I took half of the things that I had right now for, um, and, like, if I took them at, for an advantage, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now, because I've learned that through hard work and uh, appreciation is where you can get now, so. Yeah. For sure. Now, when you practice, obviously you practice throwing the ball and there's all kinds of things. What about the mindset? You know, you've really got a, uh, this is a real focused precision. Like this is a precision game, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, how do you prepare yourself for going into, do we call it a game or a match? Um, you can call it either or honestly. Um, but for me, I focus a lot on my off time on mental game. So I'll focus or I'll find like a book. I've read like three or four books about like studying the mental game and how to apply it to like competing and all that. So being able to understand your mental game and kind of understand what makes you frustrated or what makes you bowl better is a big key in success, as well as understanding that if you don't take time for yourself between practicing and don't rest, I guess, it can make being a bowler almost extremely hard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's a very physically taxing sport, but um, it may not look like it, but it very well is. No, I, yeah. But yeah, it, my big thing is just focusing on mental and the best way to do that is through reading. Right. 
So you get mental health, right? I mean, that all comes into play. You've got to take care of that mental health and mm-hmm. it's okay to take a break. And uh, we all have a different way of handling. That's great that you read. Um, uh, there's so much that can be learned from doing that. So uh, listen, congratulations uh, to you and uh, to your team as well, you know, and um, if we want to follow you, is there, is there a place that we can follow you along? Like when this happens? I'm not 100% sure, but I can definitely make sure that I send it over to my Aunt Erin so she can pass the word. Yeah. We're not 100% sure what's going on streaming-wise just because there were some issues with the last event that they had. Okay. So they're going to give us a heads up when we get there. Right. Okay. Well, if you could share that so that it gets to me somehow, I'd love to share that around. We'll get uh, we'll get the hometown watching and, and cheering for you. Yeah, and uh, absolutely. giving you all the thumbs up. Thank you so much for your time here today. I'm sure you've, I know you've got lots going on. When do you leave? I leave Thursday night. Is when all we right. fly out. All right. Well, safe travels, Morgan, and all the best to you. And we'll, uh, we'll, can we have you back when you return? Um, I can try and set up a time. So absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. Morgan, all the all best. Right. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, of course. Thank you. You're welcome. Morgan Pelkey, uh, representing Team Canada, part of Team Canada, headed down to Sweden for bowling. And what an amazing, uh, I wish I'd had more time there because uh, it's, it's quite a story. Um, you can actually Google Morgan Pelkey and and find all kinds of wonderful information about her. And uh, 21 years old and second time doing this, right? So way to go, Morgan. We will follow her along. I know her aunt, Karen, who's very proud, will keep messaging me on Facebook uh, to give us updates with that. All right. Keep talking about so much to do here in Sarnia and Sarnia Lampton, Lampton County, but here right in Sarnia, um, Strangway Center. So nice to have this facility open back up. And Mike Neely is joining us here today to inform us about some of the great things that happened. Mike, how you doing? Good, David. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you've, uh, when did you start at the Strangway? Now it's been, uh, just a short while. Yeah, just a short little while. I started uh, at the end of October in 2021. So um, if math does me correct, it's around seven months or so that I've uh, that I've been here. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, well, holy crap, what a time to start a new job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's already been uh, the highs and lows, right, of uh, just working through lockdowns, reopening, um, changing in capacity limits and all that sort of stuff. So um, it's been very unique, to say the least. Um, because, yeah, I haven't really seen what the center is like um, pre-pandemic, I guess so, uh, yeah. you would say. We're getting close. Um, we're adding more and more programs back each session. So, um, yeah, we're very happy to have, you know, reduced restrictions, more people allowed yeah. in the building here. And just seeing those those faces, uh, the, the people are just so happy to be back here. The The social part of, of the Strangway Center is huge. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we see a lot of happy faces around here. So many people have relied on the Strangway Center for so many years. So when it was taken away, it was like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I know there was a lot I of do, right. So yeah, like, and I know there was a lot of adapting there, but it still can't replace uh, what's happening now. And I, I, uh, you know, I've done interviews with Strangway Strangway Center staff before, um, and I always like to point out that the Strangway Center has things for 20 plus years of age. It's it's had this label of uh, retirement or dare I say the old folks home, the old place or whatever, right? You know, yep. all those yeah. labels. Talk about the the things that are available for uh, 20 years and up. Yeah, for sure, David. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because if you weren't going to, I was going to mention that it is a center for individuals 20 years and older. Um, when it was originally founded, it, it was a senior center, uh, 50 plus, but um, over a decade ago, um, they changed it into a, a 20 plus facility. So um, currently right now, uh, again, due to COVID, we've had modified hours. So we're only open Monday to Friday, 830 to 430. So that does affect, uh, you know, individuals who are still working's ability to, to come and attend programs. But uh, we're looking to bring back evening programming for the fall session. So around September, give or take, okay. um, we will begin to have some more evening programming again, which, you know, can get into a different demographic uh, here at the, the Strangway Center. But to answer your question, um, yeah, we have a wide variety of programs here, right from health and wellness. So, you know, your fitness programs, your yogas, 
okay. uh, your meditations, um, that sort of thing to technology, right? So we have some iPad courses and, um, you know, the basics on, on that and how to use it. Um, to arts and crafts, we just had a, a water coloring eight week program uh, finish up and oh, wow. uh, it, was, it was it was wonderful. The, the pictures they left with framed pictures and everything. Um, and these people knew nothing about water coloring when they first started. And nice. yeah, some of the, the frame pictures, I would never have a chance at uh, doing as good as a job <laughs> as them. But um, yeah, so arts and crafts, uh, we got board games and just games in general and, and sports. So the pickleball, carpet bowling, shuffleboard. Um, oh, wow. And the, yeah. And then we got chess and Scrabble, uh, cribbage, just, you know, those kind of drop-in programs, we call them. So they're not uh, required okay. to pre-register um, some of those drop-in programs like Scrabble and chess. Um, so that was something that we just returned uh, not too long ago um, because throughout the pandemic, obviously yeah, we sure. had to contact trace and, and stay within uh, capacity restrictions. So everything was pre-register, yeah. um, but we have brought back our select drop-in programs, which nice. is basically the programs that are non-instructor led. So okay. they don't, there's no need for an instructor. They're just self-run. So what about the, I got to ask about the cafe. Is that reopened yet? The cafe has not uh, opened back up just yet. Um, they're um, discussing that right now in the, okay. the Germain master plan and what the, the best idea is to bring that back to, to life here. It's, I loved going there for lunch. Yeah, we we get asked probably every day or at least every other day when it's yeah. going to open back up. So definitely uh, something that's high on our priority list. So um, they're, they're working on that. And uh, yeah, once it's once it's back open, I know it'll be a pretty busy spot over there. So right. Um, Let's yeah. talk about the hobby shop that uh, you got. A, 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 like, if you got, what is this all about? Just yeah, come in and, and learn, or what? Sure. So, um, so the Strangway Community Center. We have our own building that I'm currently sitting in right now with uh, about like six different rooms where a lot of those fitness programs and carpet bowling and etc. Uh, take place. But right, uh, right next door, uh, its own separate building is the hobby shop. So. This is a place for woodworking projects only um, and for, for hobby like projects. So, you know, bird feeders or um, yeah. any just small little project that, uh, that you're working on. It's not to come here and uh, bring a, a big, huge project and do a I house can't renovation. Back up my trailer full of pallets, yeah. And yeah. build bird houses, use your tools and then sell them. No. Yeah. Unfortunately <laughs> it's, it's just for the smaller like projects, but um, people do, um, if it is a bit of a bigger project, they might bring it in in stages, right? Bring a couple pieces for this part and then next day a different part. Yeah, but, sure. um, but yeah, it's it's a unique amenity that we have here and, uh, you know, really trying to get the word out about it because not a lot of people know what the building beside the Strangway Center is. They just see Hobby Shop and they yeah, drive on know. by, right? So um, it's it's amazing. We got pretty well every tool that you can think about, safety equipment as well. And then uh, we have supervisors on duty. So um, it's open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 okay. with a supervisor. They take a, a bit of a lunch break there. And then another supervisor will come in for the 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. time slot. You can purchase um, a half half day token, basically, um, for $7.25 if you only need, you know, the first three hours or the afternoon oh, three hours. Okay. And then if you need to be in there the full day, then it's then it's twelve dollars and twenty five cents. So um, and yeah, the, the supervisors are knowledgeable. Oh, is that all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you have all That's the tools. Wonderful. You have knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable supervisors in there, too, that are always willing to, to give a hand when, right. when needed. So now I see um, it says you got woodworking courses are going to be run periodically um, like could that be for like somebody like me like i don't know what to do could i learn on these things or do you gotta already have some skills there no yeah so we we are gonna run courses we just finished up uh, a woman's woodworking for beginners um so but we will also have just a, an open woodworking for beginners one that male and female can participate in um so basically the first first week they'll just kind of go over the the tools the safety procedures kind of the proper technique on on how to use the equipment and then by the end of it about a six week course you'd um i think they finished off like a snack table just recently so oh, you nice. do you do leave with a complete project um 
And then in that graphic there, it also says the intarsia is another course. So I had to look this up the first time it was presented to me. Um, but intarsia woodworking is just like fine, detailed woodworking. Um, so yeah, it's oh, very interesting. That wouldn't be me. <laughs> it'd be pretty. It'd be pretty tricky, and you'd have to have patience and a steady hand. But um, <laughs> yeah, so. But I can imagine the results for those that are able to pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. So the that class, they uh, two of the um, participants did a a dog face. So they left with a dog face and um, just like the eye, you know, all the detail that that oh, was wow. put into it, the ears, the eyes. It's it was uh, pretty intense and very well done. So. That's another one, but um, yeah, we're going to definitely keep the the woodworking courses coming. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but then there's, uh, what have we got? Some tennis lessons we're going to talk about here as well. Introductory youth tennis lessons. Yeah, a brand new program. Um, obviously, you'll see that the ages are 8 to 12, so it does not occur here at the Strangway Community Centre. That is for 20 plus, but this one is, is outdoors, as you can see there on the graphic at Kenwick. Yeah. And then the second uh, session is at Linden Park. So uh, like I said, brand new program uh, will be instructed by Susan Wu. Um, she is out of the Sarnia Tennis Club. So yes. obviously knows what she's doing. Um, and yeah, just trying to trying to build up the game of tennis. Um, it's something that we we haven't offered in a, a couple of years, obviously, with the, the pandemic. So um, registration is open. Um, I think the Kenwick Park one is almost filled up already. So okay, love, love to see it. Um, but yeah, it's Monday to Friday. So five straight days um, for an hour and a half for $45 for any kids, eight to 12. And yeah. I think uh, it's nice that you've been able to keep these prices reasonable. Right. Because you know? I think for people that's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people on budgets, et cetera, right? Yeah, exactly. uh, as well. Um, is, is there, and this is great as well. I just want to jump back with Strangway Center for a minute though. Um, yeah. is there, there is a membership fee to be a part of Strangway Center or how does that work? Right. So you don't have to be a member in order to participate in any, um, okay. program that we offer. It just gives you the member rate. So, um, a full year membership is 55 50, for example. Um, we do have a six month membership and a four month membership All right. at lower cost, but, um, if you pay for the membership, you'll then get 15% discounts on instructor-led programs oh, all right. and up to about 50% off of non-instructor-led programs, oh, wow. which are usually those drop-in programs. Yeah. So you'll get yeah 50% off. So if you're coming once a week, a couple times a week, uh, you'll definitely um, get your money back. But we always want to make sure that the individual um, you know, is going to get their value out of their membership before um, you know they purchase one. So. Yeah, for sure. Wow, it's nice to see all of this going on. And I know, you're, like I say, you're seeing smiling faces, which is, uh, again, this is something that was so important to so many people in our community. Uh, so be able to uh, bring this back to life is, is is good for our community. Now, speaking of community, there's, uh, there's another, is there like a community challenge that's happening right now, right? Talk about yeah. that. Yeah, this one, uh, we're off to a good start with it too. So I get to, I get pretty excited uh, explaining and talking about this one. Uh, the Community Better Challenge is uh, put on by the uh, Participation Organization. Um, and it's a nationwide challenge um, to see who's uh, Canada's most active community. And it runs from June 1st to June 30th. So we're already uh, 13 days into the challenge. Right. And, and currently we're sitting third in Ontario. And wow. not, yes, yeah. And ninth in the uh, the entire nation. So that's amazing. Yeah, I, I can think, hear the, your competitive spirit coming yeah, out of the tone of your voice there. Yeah. Buddy. So it's, it, <laughs> no, it's, it, I got to say, I'm a little surprised at how well we're doing, but I'm loving every bit of it and uh, trying to get everybody on board with this challenge. And what you basically have to do is, is download the participation app on your smartphone right? and then just track your activity minutes. Um, when you first download the app, it's going to get you to put in your information. And within that information is your postal code. And that's how it connects you to the community of Sarnia. You don't have to make a team or anything like that, Oh, okay. um, which you can do because there. I've had some questions about that because it does kind of prompt you to make a team. Um, because if you do make a team, like say you and I, David, want to make a team with a couple other people, we could kind of compete with one another, but as a well, team and, and win prizes that way too. So there's ways well, to get prize. prizes as a team, as an individual. Okay. Um, and then the big prize obviously is if Sarnia is named Canada's most active community, we could uh, win up to $100,000. So a uh, big incentive there. And uh, like $100,000 to the team? 
uh, to the city of Sarnia, and which would be uh, put back to some sort of oh, parks okay. and rec um, project or amenity. That's still a win. Sort. Yeah, uh, it'd be amazing. And then I think they do 13 smaller prizes up to about 10,000 or so for per province um, winners. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of downloading that app, tracking your activity minutes, which could be anything from gardening uh, to, to going on a walk with your dog. Uh, to maybe an actual workout, or or you can even track your sports if people are in. What if, uh, if I ride my motorcycle, does that count? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they'll give it a, give us that one, but uh, <laughs> um, right. yeah. but walking around the block or yeah, uh, walking through the house, I suppose even like you know yeah. just anything you're doing, you're just really tracking, uh, which many of us are tracking anyway uh, already with our our smartphone devices, etc. So you might as well have this one running in the background, right? Yeah, and you can connect this app to your Fitbits and, and that sort of thing. So um, oh, okay. it would make the tracking really easy for you. Um, personally, I don't have like a Fitbit or anything like that. So I have to go in. There's a little shoe with a plus symbol on it. I just click it. I click what activity I did. Say I had my baseball last night for two hours. I click it and my activity minutes are uh, right then automatically uploaded to the city of Sarnia's uh, score. So nice. if you don't have a smartphone, you can track on the website, Participant Actions website as well. So, oh, so. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the goal is to uh, encourage healthy, active lifestyles, right? And I've already heard some some really, you know, they make you feel good stories. Uh, yeah, lady came, right? yeah, a lady came in and she said, you know what, Mike, like, you know, my husband's usually just kind of sitting on the couch watching TV. Now he's he's motivated. He's coming on walks with me. He's doing this. And I was just like, that's amazing, right? Like, that's yeah. that's obviously what their goal is. And it, for us to be a part of it and pushing this challenge and to hear stories like that, it's, a, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, my wife's going to watch. And guess what I'm going to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> but not a bad thing, right? Yeah. I'll use a little exercise and, exactly. and uh, you know, stay healthy. And, and that creates... You know, uh, mental health, right? It really helps with mental health as well. And yeah. our, our communities are having good mental health. And it shows in the community as well. So Yeah, and it um, brings us together a little bit. Like there's some fitness yeah. class, some fitness classes here. They've all, like I said, created a team. So there's like 12 of them. They're all on a team and they're all, you know, very energetic about it. So, um, yeah, I couldn't be happier to partake in, in something like this. And, and like I said, we're going strong. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that it goes till June 30th. So, Right. Uh, Mike yeah. wants number one, folks. Yeah, we want number one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much to you. And I know you've got a team around you there, too, that you all work together and yeah. to make this uh, happen for, like I said, this is really an important part of our community. So uh, thanks, Mike, for being here. And uh, listen, come back anytime if you've got some special events on. Just uh, keep I get your emails all the time. So OK. Uh, that's helpful. But if there's anything in particular, uh, you're welcome back anytime. So thanks for amazing. For I'll uh, definitely probably take you up on that, David. And I appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. you having me on. So no problem. is there anything I missed? Uh, one final chance to um, see anything else? Or just one covered? final thing that I uh, added after we spoke earlier is just uh, June 25th. Um, lifeguards will be on uh, duty at Canaterra uh, Beach. So that'll be oh, okay. uh, that'll be firing up on June 25th. So just uh, oh, yeah. something that came out in our record meeting today so wanted to pass that message along as well very good thanks mike enjoy the rest of your week my friend okay thank you david take care uh, mike neely from uh, strangway center so nice to have uh the strangway center back here in the show because we've had so many different conversations with them and ages 20 plus ages 20 plus we need a theme song for that so we can get it out there so everybody knows it's not just the senior center anymore. It's for all ages. And, uh, you know, the hobby shop being there, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm a little in, I'm not a handy guy by any means. I barely change light bulbs, but uh, I might take myself up on that woodworking thing. That sounds like a lot of fun. And if I can pull that off, boy, I could really impress some people. <laughs> it is really good. I was very sincere to Mike when I said, it's nice to see this important part of our community coming back to life. So thank you to the Strangway Center. Thanks again, Mike, for being here. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. But of course, before we go, I always want to say, don't forget the motorcycles are on the road. Drive aware and ride aware. And motorcycle riders, we got to respect the road as well. It goes both ways out there. Cyclists are out on the road and, uh, you know, scooters, etc. And don't forget the rider respect coming up this Saturday as well. Also, thanks again to our friends at Hughes Intelligence, Joe's Discount Tire, Huron Signs, and, of course, Tourism, Sarnia Lampton. And, of course, all of you for watching. Because if you didn't watch, like, 
what's the point, right? I really appreciate all of you. That's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. I will see you next time right here on the show. Bye-bye. <laughs>